I'm here with Peter Sweeney of Primal Fusion. And Peter, why don't you just give us a kind of a brief intro about what, what you do and what Primal Fusion is all about. Sure. Well, I'm the, uh, I'm the founder and the co-president of Primal okay. Fusion. We're based in Waterloo, Ontario, Canada. And uh, we're building a, uh, a series of products that uh, help in the automatic uh, assembly and, uh, and creation of content in a way that's uh, driven by the thoughts and the intentions of consumers. Okay. Uh, so, so technically, it's, uh, it's a matter of um, building, uh, building the content up from scratch uh, in a way that uh, reflects the needs of the consumer at the moment that they articulate that need. So what's different about our, our process is that it's fully automated and it happens in real time. Hmm. So it's quite, a, uh, it's quite a profound change in terms of the, uh, the approach to building content. Interesting. Um, typically, uh, content is created in advance of consumers articulating their need. Okay. And for producers, this, uh, this creates quite a challenge. Uh, generally, they have to spend a great deal of time uh, architecting and assembling the content in a way that anticipates the needs of the consumers. So what we're doing instead is holding off on that process of organizing and assembling the content until the instant that the consumer articulates hmm. their interest in the content. And then in real time, we build a, a semantic lattice in order to support the content, and we provision the content from different sources and dynamically build the page to meet that need. Okay. So just to be clear, are you actually creating the content or are you assembling the content from already created articles and, and videos and other kinds of yeah, things? Yeah, certainly uh, oh. more on the latter. Okay. Uh, and it really comes down to uh, you know where you strike that line between what's new content and what's the, uh, what's the assembly of existing content. Right. right. So our, our technology is focused on this, uh, this notion of building uh, what we call an, a knowledge model or a, a semantic network that represents the kind of content that the consumer wants. Okay. And then we're able to, in a very fine-grained way, assemble that content from different sources. So the, uh, the, the composite page that would be created uh, may involve content from many different sources. Sure. So if that's creating new content or if that's assembly of existing content, you okay. tell me. Uh, if we have someone write a story, are you then taking pieces of that, of that article that was created and taking pieces of it and assembling it into a new way? Is that what's going on? Or? Yeah, yeah. Really? I mean, that's, uh, that's certainly, uh, I mean, you know, one way of thinking about it is that, uh, for example, a, a page of hand-rolled content is very much like a, um, uh, a collection of, of different nuggets of information. Sure. And it's architected in a certain way with a certain perspective in mind. So one way of thinking about this technology is um, taking those informational nuggets and liberating them in a way from that fixed single perspective. That's interesting. And then enabling the consumer through their perspective on the content to organize it in a way that makes sense for the task that they have. So if you think of any any producer, um, be it a, a publisher or a retailer or, a, sure. uh, again, customer support organization, they generate um, a fairly large number of web pages. Um, but again, that information is all kind of locked up in that one way that they're organizing it. Sure. So we believe by uh, providing, again, more expansive ways for their consumers to affect how it's organized, how it's presented, they'll be able to, uh, A, increase their effective content inventory. So if you're monetizing through content, um, right. obviously having a greater inventory of content available to you is important. Um, B, it affects uh, a, a real change in the customer engagement as well. Mm. So again, if your customer is forced to wade through a, a monolithic website, you know, going laboriously to page after right. page after page to get each informational nugget that they need, there's simply a far more easy way to do mm. that by enabling them to, again, have a more direct impact on how that content is pulled together mm. and organized. Uh, and then the last thing is, if you're not so uh, focused
focused on building one way of looking at the information, you can absolutely slash the production costs in creating these monolithic websites. Mm. So again, I think the, the value proposition is really focused on those three areas. Uh, more content is more revenue, better cost, uh, customer engagement, and then lastly, saving the costs of production. Mm. So you, you could um, conceivably have a lot of people generating very small pieces of content based on specific topic areas, paragraph at a time, could just see throw it. those in a, in a bundle and you would then produce the, the pages requested at the time they are needed. Conceivably, yes, absolutely. I mean, people, people are going to obviously continue to make their own hand-rolled content. So if you have a particular perspective or, or argument that you're trying to make, right. then tailoring that on a page makes a lot of sense. Um, but again, it also makes a lot of sense to give people an opportunity to cut across all of those different arguments that you're making sure. uh, in order to come up with something that's more uniquely their own. Where's the ROI? Where's the money coming in? Mm -hmm. So do you see it in, in being able to uh, re obviously reduce the efforts that are required to generate the content mm -hmm. overall? Absolutely. Um, what other kind of things would be affected for, for the users of this? And I'm guessing that the, typically it's a publisher. Yeah. It is, yeah, and and you need to think of it in terms of uh, a dual market. So we uh, we're obviously um, very concerned about the uh, uh, the problems of our customers, uh, but we're also concerned about the problems of their customers as well. Sure. So from a consumer perspective, uh, I, again, it's just one of convenience and simplicity. Um, you know, search is fantastic from the perspective of going out and finding that nugget of information that you need. Um, but all of us, uh, I think struggle with that need uh, to navigate through many different silos of information. Sure. So I, th I think that's a very pressing problem for consumers and one that, again, this notion of allowing the consumers to organize the information themselves implicitly uh, through their interactions with the content uh, makes a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. uh, but then on the producer side, in addition to that, you know, that more refined customer engagement, that, that tighter connection with their consumers, there's just the, 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 the practical benefit of taking this asset of the information that you've, you've pulled together and, and liberating it in a way that delivers much more value to your organization. Mm -hmm. And I can see how this would work very, very well for um, support uh, information, uh, catalog information, purchasing, those kind of things. Uh, do you see use for it in, in an editorial context as well? Yes, yes, I do. Um, for example, um, in this this rapidly evolving market for automated content manufacturing, right. um, there's many different types of players involved. So, for example, uh, you have companies like uh, the New York Times or the BBC, um, obviously tremendous organizations in terms of content manufacturing, right. uh, but they're bringing semantic technologies into their workflow, into their processes sure. in order to become more productive. Um, you have new entrance uh, companies like uh, demand media for example mm -hmm. who are looking for opportunities to um, essentially automate the process of creating content again to become more productive with it now the content that they're manufacturing is certainly not of the editorial quality uh, sure. of the New York Times uh, but they're finding markets for that content mm. and similarly uh, with uh, completely automated approaches like primal fusion uh, our content has uh, obviously a certain um, quality and uh, quantity profile that makes it ideal for certain markets. Uh, but at the end of the day, if you can find uh, applications that simplify things for consumers, um, I, I think you've got, a, you, you've got a, a winning argument on your hands. Yep, I think so. All right, good. Well, thank you very much. Thank I, you. I sure appreciate, appreciate your it. time. Thank you. Glad we could get together. My pleasure. All right.